getting seated, turn in your Bibles to Ephesians chapter 6, verse 16. Just one verse. Because it deals with the uh, shield of faith. And we'll talk about it quite a bit this morning. <coughs> and then we'll observe the Lord's Supper and tie it all in together. It always amazes me as I start a series like this as to how that it, uh, it will uh, uh, bring it about what we need when we need it the most. So Ephesians chapter 6, verse 16, it says, Above all, taking the shield of faith, which, is, uh, which you'll be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one. All the fiery darts of the wicked one. And uh, it says above all. So, so it, it does hold a place of great importance. So let's uh, kind of concentrate on that for a few moments this morning. Dear Father, we're grateful that, God, you equip us. You give us what we need. Lord, it's not up to us to manufacture this, this uh, uh, <coughs> armor, and these pieces, Lord. You give them to us. But, Lord, we have to put them on. We have to exercise it. We have to utilize it. We have to know what it's used for. And, Lord, we have to appropriate it into our daily lives. Lord, help us to do so uh, with your grace, with your power, by the power of the Holy Spirit. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. So as it starts out in verse 16, where it says above all, uh, then that uh, means an emphasis there. It means it's more important than all the other articles. You say, well, what could be more important? Uh, as he talks about above all, take the shield of faith, because it is our faith. Uh, that uh, is uh, the basis on which uh, all other things uh, come into being in our spiritual lives. And why uh, Hebrews chapter 11 verse, verse 6 says without faith it's impossible uh, to please him, to please God. And so when you put on the breastplate of righteousness, you're putting on your, your faith in the God of righteousness. When you're putting on the shoes of the gospel, of the preparation of the gospel. Uh, you're exercising faith in the Lord by doing so. And, but it's only by faith uh, that the God of the gospel, the belt of truth, is uh, also applied by faith, the tr essential truths of God. And so there's no truth outside of the God who is truth. And so as we look at this, we see the uh, shield of faith is of great importance. By the way, when we quote that verse of Scripture in Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 6, where it says, without faith, it's impossible to please God. Now, if you remember in your English class, I never was good in English, but and I, that's kind of obvious, but if you remember in your English class, when you construct a sentence, you're not to put double negatives in there. And you say, well, how come it's in the Bible? Uh, is there something wrong? But no, it's put there for emphasis sake. And there's several places in the Bible where there's a double negative uh, put into a sentence or a phrase or a thought. And the reason why is it, because it emphasizes something of uh, its very, very poignant truth. It's a very pointed truth there. And we see uh, that it's saying uh, that without faith, it's impossible to please God. In other words, with faith, it is possible. You can please God. And so you can turn that around and understand uh, that it's our uh, uh, pleasure uh, to please God. And you can walk in this life. You don't have to be perfect, but you can walk in faith and you can please God in many areas of your life. And so it's the shield of faith that quenches the fiery darts of the wicked. It's, a, it's out in front. It gives the soldier the ability to ward off the attack before it, it gets critical into your lives. You know, sometimes we, we think we're victims. We think that uh, we're, we're slaves to uh, this world system as to how things are done. We don't have to be slaves of this world system. We, don't, uh, we can be more than conquerors, the Bible tells us. And so you can uh, take the scriptures, you can uh, look at that, you can begin to understand uh, how good God has designed a faith uh, to work into our lives. And so uh, this particular thing, as we mentioned earlier, is a movie prop. And it's typical of maybe a particular period of time 
but the uh, Roman time, uh, some 2,000 years ago, uh, the shield was a, a little bit larger, quite a bit larger, as a matter of fact. It was about two feet across and about four feet uh, down. It had beveled edges, and the soldiers could literally uh, form a wall, as you see uh, some of the SWAT teams, you might have seen them on a movie, or you might have seen them actually in, in, on television in some of these uh, riot situations, Ferguson and other places where crazy people are doing crazy things. And uh, you see uh, the uh, policemen come out in riot gear, and they have a shield, and they all come together and put those shields together, and they form a wall. And that's what we are as uh, believers, as a church. Uh, we uh, take our shields, we join together, and we're a wall of protection around God's people. Think about that. It's very important. In other words, we don't just go out uh, alone in this wicked world. We're not by ourselves. We have one another. Uh, we uh, bring our shields together, and as these were designed to where uh, they would interlock, or would not interlock, but they would come together uh, to where uh, they could form a wall. Something else that's very interesting about uh, that particular period of time, you have to understand the warfare and what was happening in that time. They didn't have guns back then, but they had arrows. Okay, but they didn't just have arrows, they would dip the arrows in a pitch, uh, in tar, and they would set them on fire. Now think about this. They would uh, dip the arrows in pitch, they would set them on fire, and then they would send them over. And that's the reason why the wording is specific in this verse of scripture, because it says, able to quench, quench the fiery darts of the wicked one. And so they would, uh, it was a, a, a framework uh, that had leather stretched about, real thick leather, and they would, many times they would dip that leather in water, uh, and ha it would be liquid, it would be uh, able to quench the fiery darts, and they would do so, it would uh, help uh, to quench the darts as uh, they would hurl them through, and you wouldn't burn you. You can imagine the damage that an arrow that was dipped in pitch, it, it was uh, pierced some part of your body, uh, 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 as to uh, the damage that that could do, completely <coughs> incapacitate you. So you're not just talking about the wound of the arrow itself, you're talking about uh, set you on fire and uh, uh, really destroy a, a person. And so uh, it, something else here that's very interesting and it's what it says here about quenching. It didn't say quench would able to be quench uh, just some of the fiery darts. Now here's where it really gets specific. It says that if you have the shield of faith, that it will quench all, all, A-double-L, -L, all the fiery darts of the wicked one. Now this is important in the fact that uh, you understand that God's faith is sufficient. See, faith is a grace. Faith is a gift from God. And it is sufficient. It is powerful. It is real. It's not just something that's uh, uh, some idea that's floating around in the uh, uh, atmosphere somewhere. It's not just, well, you know, it would be a good thing if we would just have uh, uh, enough faith and, and uh, uh, to, to be able to overcome maybe this thing or this problem or this thing, but I'm still battling with this and I'm battling with that. And, uh, listen, here is an understanding that the faith that we have in God, when it's put forward, when it's put in the right position into our lives, it will quench all, A-double-L, -L, all the fiery darts of the wicked one. And so uh, that means we have to be alert. That means that uh, it, it doesn't just happen. You just don't lay down on the ground and say, well, my, my shield is around here somewhere. You know, <laughs> I, 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 think I, I think I have a shield around here somewhere. Or, or I might just lay down on the ground and just kind of put it over me and uh, maybe uh, I'll do nothing. No, you have to be very alert as to where those fiery darts are coming from. Uh, you have to hold it up there so that there's a great responsibility upon our part as a soldier of Christ. So notice something else. The wounded soldier is uh, not the same as a dead soldier, but, but still a wounded soldier uh, uh, 
it would happen from time to time, obviously, in the battlefield. And they would use, it's my understanding, that they can actually take a person's shield, and it was a, a large enough, just barely large enough, to use as a, a what we call a, 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 in the in the ambulance or, or in, even in our little rescue truck. We have a backboard. Some of you we've even put on that backboard and uh, uh, put some tape across you, or straps across you, and this, that, and the other, and carried you out. Uh, and we've done that sort of thing. And uh, it, 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 it can serve as a backboard. It can serve as, a, as a, a means by which you can carry a wounded soldier off of the battlefield. And so that, that just lets you know that your faith is going to carry you through all the way. Amen. It's going to rescue you. It's going to rescue you. It's going to help you. And so uh, there's much to, to think about in this mindset of understanding what the shield of faith is. Notice how the, uh, the, the church is, is not to be... A, a place of, of perfection, the church is to be like a hospital. When we're hurting, when something is wrong, uh, that we can come. And so we're not just talking about the soldier that's all fit and, and he's, got every, he's got it all together. We're talking about people that sometimes we do get wounded. Sometimes our, our faith uh, 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 is, uh, uh, we, we didn't position it right. Sometimes we did get wounded, and when we do, we come and we uh, meet in the church and, and we, uh, uh, we uh, nurse people back to health, just like you do in any war. You have a hospital. Notice then, uh, imagine what we would do as a church uh, if, as, uh, if things really get bad and things are kind of looking bad in some areas, Amen. And what, what if things really get bad? You say, well, preacher, I, I don't think we're, we're going to go through the tribulation period. I don't believe so either. But listen, there's no guarantee. You know, the first century church went through a lot of persecution, a lot of problems. And we have no guarantee that we won't either. Amen? So, oh, yeah, you know, we're, we're just going to come out with a blaze of glory. It's just going to be wonderful, uh, completely unscathed. There's not going to be any problems. Uh, in fact, some people in the theology, they think that everything's just going to get great and, and rosy and wonderful in the end times. Well, the Bible says that things will grow worse and worse. So uh, Paul says to take up the shield of faith. So what kind of faith are we talking about? Remember, he's talking to believers. He's talking to believers, and, and John kind of reinforces this. In 1 John 5, 4, he says, Whosoever is born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. And so, uh, as we talk about faith, and of course, uh, Hebrews 11, 1, the great description of faith here, says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. Now that's completely opposite to what the, the fleshly mind thinks about faith. I remember back in Bible college days, somebody would, would uh, say, well, you know, we don't have any grocery money this week. Spend it all on the wrong things. <laughs> we don't have any grocery money. So we're going to have to live by faith, meaning we're going to live on nothing. And they call that faith. That's not faith. Amen? Now, now sometimes you might be down to nothing, and you have to trust God. But that's not, uh, that's not nothing. That is a substance. It's real. And George Mueller was, was a great uh, uh, illustration of that. We find that George Mueller, uh, it, well, I'm, I'm jumped ahead in my notes here somewhere. But anyway, I'm going to talk about George Mueller here just for just a moment. He started an orphanage with 50 cents in his pocket. Okay? 50 cents in his pocket. He started an orphanage. He ended up uh, uh, having uh, 13 some odd acres, had five giant buildings made of, of stone, of rock. Uh, 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 he fed over 2,000 orphans at a time. And many times they would, they would come the meal time. And they would, uh, they would actually assemble together in the cafeteria at meal time. And they would have the prayer for the meal. And nothing was there. Nothing was in the kitchen. 
And they would pray and say, Lord, we want to thank you for this uh, marvelous meal uh, that you've prepared for us. And many, many times over, they would have a knock at the door at the very time that they were praying over their meal. And someone would deliver a hot meal uh, to them in a timely fashion. Uh, that happened over and over and over again. And he, he, he uh, uh, vowed that he would never, ever, ever uh, 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 beg money from mankind. He never asked a human being for money, but all he would ask God. He would pray to God, and God uh, would uh, uh, meet that need. Notice then, we need to place uh, some things, we need to place our faith in facts and not feelings. Don't just trust your instincts. The Bible says that we're not to lean upon our own understanding, but in all of our ways acknowledge him, and he will direct our paths. The Bible is specific about God will never contradict his word. Feelings come and feelings go, and feelings can be deceiving. And uh, there's nothing wrong with, with feeling a good feeling. I feel a good feeling every once in a while, Amen. Uh, when I eat chocolate, I feel a great feeling. <laughs> but there's nothing wrong with that, feeling a good feeling, but I, I don't uh, need to rule my life by feelings. It says three men were walking on a wall. Feeling, faith, and fact. And faith was taken back, so close was faith to feeling. He stumbled and he fell too. But fact remained and pulled faith back, and faith brought feeling too. And so that, the author of that's unknown, but uh, you see the picture here. So daily faith is rooted in fact and not feeling. And then secondly, faith has nothing to do with probability. And here's where uh, uh, George Mueller comes into play. Uh, we find that there's a, uh, you know, there's all kinds of things, not just that illustration. I could uh, uh, talk to each one of you. If you've been a believer for any number of years and walking with the Lord and following Him, uh, there's times in your life you can look back and you can say, you know what, uh, God provided uh, for a need. And it might not even have been a, a material need. It might have been a spiritual need. It might have been something else that God provided for you right at the time that you needed it the most. Uh, maybe you know, just a word of encouragement. And we find that... Uh, uh, it, it's important that we understand that, that uh, uh, probability uh, says, uh, uh, well, you know, it could be, it couldn't be. You know, there's certain probability. And it's probable, it's not probable that a little shepherd boy could kill a giant. Amen. <laughs> but it happened. And, and probability says no, but faith says yes. Remember the uh, Jewish people in the time of Joshua as they would uh, march around the city of Jericho? That's not very probable that the wall would fall down after, after uh, uh, seven days uh, of walking around the wall. That's not very probable, but it happened because it did, they did it by faith. Notice there's uh, many other things that we could note uh, Daniel in the den of lions. That's not very probable that those uh, lions would keep their mouths shut, but they got locked all in the den. It's not, it wasn't probable when Noah built the ark. Uh, there, in fact, it had never rained before. You could say a 100% chance. Now, Joyce and I play this game on our smartphones. We, we pull up the weather, and, uh, and if it says there is a 100% probability of rain during this particular period of time, uh, then, and it even gives it, uh, at 9.15, there's a, it, it comes on, it even gives me an alert, okay? It flashes up on the screen, gives me an alert. At 9.15 this morning, there's a 95% chance of that it's going to rain. Well, I guarantee you, I say there's a 100% chance, chance that it's not going to rain if it says it's going to, amen? It's just crazy. It's just crazy. It's a, uh, well, I'm going to start subscribing to some other kind of weather service. <laughs> I think that was Yahoo weather or something, you know? And Yahoo is way, way off. I don't know where they get their their uh, things from. But anyway, maybe they're confusing Toledo with the Toledo, Ohio. Or something. I don't know. What it is. <laughs> Something's wrong there. But uh, uh, but the probabilities. And we don't talk about probabilities when we talk about faith. We just talk about what does God say, 
what does God do and what God can do. So here's a little poem that says this. Doubt sees the obstacles. Faith sees the way. Doubt sees the darkest night, but faith sees the day. Doubt dreads to take a step, but faith soars on high. Doubt questions who believes, but faith answers I. And so it is that uh, faith has nothing to do with probability. And then faith has nothing to do with appearances. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians 5, 7, we walk by faith and not by sight. At the close of World War II, <laughs> the Allied forces were searching homes uh, and cars. They entered into basements and houses that were in ruins where some of the Jewish people had been uh, uh, kept from the Holocaust. There were brave people that, that would uh, uh, harbor uh, the uh, Jewish people to keep them from being uh, uh, extinguished during the World War II. And, uh, uh, and they found in a basement of a, of a home, uh, in the very basement scratched on the walls, were these words. I believe in the sun even when it does not shine. I believe in love even when it's not shown. And I believe in God even when he does not speak. Amen? That is faith. Faith has nothing to do with appearance. Appearance may say that God is nowhere to be found, but faith says he will never leave me. He'll never forsake me. Appearance may sometimes say uh, that things have gone awry, but faith uh, 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 says that uh, even the hairs of our head are numbered. God knows everything, and he's able. And then back to George Mueller. He started an orphanage. <laughs> And in, in doing so, he had faith, and God, God met every single need. Uh, much can be said about that uh, as well. Notice then, uh, why is it that we'd rather trust in things for security rather than the Lord? And then, that's faith explained. Let's look at faith expanded. Remember now that this was written to believers in Christ. This was written about uh, having the shield of faith. If you're a believer in Christ, you have the helmet of salvation. And we'll get to that in, in, in the next week. But the, the helmet of salvation, the, the shoes of the gospel, you, you have a, trusted in the Lord Jesus Christ. But notice now how we expand our faith. Faith grows gradually. You don't abstain, uh, uh, obtain a strong faith at once. Or uh, and, uh, it's just like an infant uh, uh, becomes a, uh, an adult, but it's after many, many years. And so uh, you have to, it takes the proper nutrition, the proper exercise. I've been listening to Dave Ramsey and reading uh, a couple of his books here right recently. And Dave Ramsey says that we need to exercise our muscles, our, 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 our uh, uh, saving muscle, our giving muscle. Uh, our work causes money to occur, muscle. Amen? The work ethic. That, that's a muscle. It needs to be developed in individuals. And, uh, uh, and we want to develop wise spending muscles. And so faith grows gradually. You have to exercise this. Abraham is known for his faith. But in his early life, you can look and see that he lacked faith in some areas. Then, secondly, faith grows spiritually. The Bible says faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. And so it's, it's something that grows spiritually in our lives. It's trust. It's trusting uh, in God. And you only trust in someone when you get to know them. And so we need to get to know God. In Psalm 9, verses 9 and 10, the Bible says the Lord will be a refuge for the oppressed. A refuge in times of trouble. And those who know your name will put their trust in you. For you, Lord, have not forsaken those who seek you. To have that relationship with God. As we seek God, as we trust in him, uh, he begins to uh, develop this. We have a trust between the two of us. Then Romans 8.28, we know that all things work together for them that love God. Who are the called according to his purpose. Some people have misunderstood that verse, that promise. 
You know, they said, well, uh, all things aren't good. It didn't say all things were good. It says all things work together for the good. And there's a whole lot of difference in that <coughs> and understanding that uh, there's a lot of things that are totally bad. Things can work together for the good. And then faith grows painful. Painful. Think about Paul, a great man of faith. He suffered much for the Lord. And George Mueller, once again, here is what he said. Trials and difficulties, obstacles and bereavement. These are the very food of faith. So here's a man, you know, oh, I, I wish I was like George Mueller. Well, listen, he went through a, a tough, tough time in his life. And so it is that we need to realize it's not about feelings and probabilities or appearance. Faith is rooted in fact. It grows gradually and sometimes even painfully <coughs> by the word of God. And we can say with the, the, the scripture writer that says, Lord, I believe, but help my unbelief. I believe, but help my unbelief. And so you might say, Richard, how are we going to tie this in? an understanding of, of uh, observing the communion this morning and, and partaking of and remembering the Lord's body and remembering the Lord's blood that was uh, 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 shed for, for the sins of mankind. Shed for my sins, shed for your sin. How do we tie this in together? It's where it says that we're to examine ourselves and we're to see uh, if we're in the faith. We need to see if we have our shield of faith in the position in the right way. We need to understand that uh, our faith in God is the most important thing. It's not our, our we don't build up ourselves, we build up our faith. Amen? And, and the Bible talks about the fact that, that uh, 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 we need to understand that our weakness is made perfect, that his strength is made perfect in our weakness. We need to understand it's not, it's not ourselves. It's God that needs to be strong. And when we understand and put that forward, uh, then uh, the, the victory follows. We'll, have, we'll be protected as we should be. Part of that is, is coming to an understanding <coughs> of what of the, the Lord's table is all about. How that Christ, we have to remember and understand the gravity of what he did when he died on the cross. And understanding that he took our sins in his body, and his body was sinless, but he took our sins. And as we uh, partake of the wafer, understanding that, that it's uh, picturing the purity of the body of Christ. And then uh, the fact that he shed his blood for our uh, sins, for the remission of sins. And he completely dealt with it uh, as, as he should have. Let us uh, bow our heads and Pray, dear Father, we're asking your blessings upon the invitation time. Lord, help us to look to you. Help us, God, to trust in you. Lord, to uh, put our shield of faith in the position where it should be in our lives. And Lord, we'll give you the praise in Christ's name. Amen. Would you stand with us for just a few moments? So we can sing on the